I painted the the brake cylinders yesterday as I said before I gave it three coats of etch primer and four coats of epoxy primer and uh, they've come up pretty good nice shiny thick coat of paint so that should give them some protection Now I'll just demask them and um, install the seals and the pots. See how we go. Okay, these are the seals for each side. You'll notice that the upper seal or the seal that goes with the retaining ring is has a groove in it, and that goes to the top. That one goes underneath that one and this is a square seal there's no groove in that one so essentially that one will go in first followed by that one and this is the small seal that goes there when we join the two halves together okay now I just want to coat the seals in fluid and I'll also brush some fluid on the inside of the caliper okay now I'll put the the lower seal in first I'll just smear that with fluid brick brick fluid so this because this is a little bit tricky you just push it in Go around, push it in, all the way around. The last bit's the hardest bit to get in, but it will just snap in. All done, just like that. Now I want to clean my fingers. Get the brick brick fluid off my fingers. Now this one will be the same. Get some fluid. Okay. Now that sits inside the ring, like so. And this will just push in into the groove like the flush job done <laughs> keep that there okay that one's done I'll just move this across we'll attempt the second one again it takes a few days for this paint to really harden I don't really want to compromise it although I'm really keen to get it back together so All good. Okay, we'll put the pots back in where they should be.
Make sure that whole lot is easy. Don't want to hold it. Okay, I'll do the rest in the voice. Okay. Two halves are joined together. Now I'll just put the um, the pads and the pins back in. One. Two. Okay, all ready to go back in the car. Okay, I've <coughs> connected the brake hose to the caliper. Now I'll put the caliper on the brake disc. This is the lock tab for the bolts. Some people don't use that, but came with the kit, so I need to use it. <laughs> this is a... Uh, I'm using a 1932 spanner. Seems to fit. Probably not the right size, it may be a close, but I suspect it might be a different size, but this is 1932. Do that one up with a 716. Once I've torqued these up, I'll go through the bleeding process with the um, with the Gunson Easy Bleed system. I'll show you the setup of it and how I use it. This is what you get in the box. Uh, a reservoir. You can fill that with fluid or not. You don't need to fill it with fluid. You can still use this bottle empty to pressurize the master cylinder. It comes with various caps, various different size caps. This one fits the MG. On the other end, fits onto your spare wheel which is just down here and I'll show you that in a minute so that's basic basic system all you're doing is pressurizing the cylinder enabling you to bleed the brakes by yourself there's other systems available this is the one I like and I like to use it the only thing is you have to excuse the airplane noise cannot go above 20 psi in your spare tire. Okay, I'm ready to start bleeding the front brakes. <coughs> no need to do the rear brakes because I did that when I um, refurbished the master cylinder so that's already been done on a previous episode. So this is the easy blade system connected to the master there's a reservoir full of fluid and I'll connect this end to a spare wheel I've kept specifically for this process. This will connect here and we can start bleeding. So the system is pressurized.
Most backyard mechanics like myself know how to bleed hydraulic brakes, but for those that don't, there's a process to be followed. Basically, you need to bleed the wheel cylinder which is furthest away from the master cylinder and progressively work your way to the closest wheel cylinder. In the case of my MGB, the master cylinder is mounted on the driver's side of my right hand side drive car. You can then see on the diagram the bleeding sequence is rear left, rear right, front left and lastly front, front right which I've marked 1 to 4. So this would be the first wheel to bleed, the second, the third and the last wheel which of course is the closest to the cylinder. So I undo the, the nipple. System's already pressurized undo the nipple. Take the clamp off the brake hose. Hopefully it will bleed a few times because obviously the cylinders are in there fully closed position. I'll let it bleed a bit, I'll lock it off and then I'll pump the brake again to, to move the discs. The discs are not quite in position yet. You can see there's still a few air bubbles in the system. Got to get rid of those. That's been bled. And um, let's make sure it's tight. The nipple's tight. Size is uh, 716 for the fronts, and I think the rear. The rear nipple is a quarter inch from memory. It's the brake cylinder, brake caliper back in place. All looking pretty good. Now we'll do the other side. I've bled both sides. This extra tube here is for the rear brakes because the the brake nipple or the bleed nipple is a different size. So that's it done, both sides done, now I've just got to go and check that uh, I do have a solid brake. Just remains for me to check the brake, the brake pedal. I do have a solid brick, so the job's done.